In a previous video, we looked at certain requirements in the 18th edition of BS7671, the wiring regulations, that addressed the issue of split load boards, as many people felt that they had become non-compliant. In this video, we're going to look at the changes made in the second amendment to those requirements to ask if split load boards, like the one we've got here, still comply. Now the change that's prompted this video is found in 531.3.2 which relates to unwanted tripping and outlines a number of things to be considered to try and minimise this. However, it's been adjusted and now for the very first time makes very specific mention of individual RCBOs. So let's have a look at it now and see if split load boards are now non-compliant. It reads, residual current protective devices shall be selected and directed such as to limit the risk of unwanted tripping. The following shall be considered, and we'll jump straight to indent two, the use of RCBOs for individual final circuits in residential premises. So that seems pretty solidly in favour of RCBOs over split load RCD protection. However, interestingly, in regulation 531.3.5.2, which relates to the use of RCDs for fault protection rather than additional protection, it does state in the note there that Except where particular restriction for selectivity applies, several circuits may be protected by the same device. So how are we to understand this seemingly conflicting information? Well, the important thing to keep in mind about regulation 531.3.2 is that it isn't about selectivity. It's about unwanted or nuisance tripping, so devices operating and disconnecting circuits when there's no reason to. How might that happen, and how will the use of individual RCBOs help to reduce unwanted tripping? The main culprit in a domestic setting is likely to be modern appliances with electronic controls that naturally leak some current to earth as part of their operation, such as washing machines, tumble dryers, dishwashers, and such like. The effect is compounded because you're likely to have several of these on kitchen and utility circuits, meaning that all those little leakages add up. Is it a significant amount of current? Well, it will vary depending on the manufacturer of the appliance, but as a rule of thumb, many appliance manufacturers will test the earth leakage of their product. If 6 milliamps or over is found, the appliance will be sent back for fault finding and correction. If as much as 5 milliamps is found, it will be passed as acceptable and sent on. So three appliances on one RCD and operating at the same time could immediately be leaking 15 milliamps to earth. Couple this with other natural but not dangerous levels of leakage from other circuits, and the RCD could be operating and disconnecting several perfectly healthy circuits. So what's the solution? Well, we've got that now familiar indent 3 in regulation 531.3.2, which used to be indent 2, and that states, in order to avoid unwanted tripping by protective conductor currents and or earth leakage currents, the accumulation of such currents downstream of the RCD shall be not more than 30% of the rated residual operating current. If the RCD protection has a rating of 30 milliamps for additional protection, then that means no more than 9 milliamps of current should be leaking to earth on the circuit or circuits that it is protecting. So if we have one RCCB protecting several circuits, then depending on what they're feeding, we may find ourselves quickly getting over that limit. However, does that mean that the split load board is a thing of the past? Not necessarily. If there's no particular restriction for selectivity, and we've broken down how to minimise selectivity issues on split load boards in one of our CPDs on the know-how page at efix.co.uk, then you could consider having RCBOs on circuits that are likely to experience high earth leakage currents, such as socket circuits and induction hobs, and a couple of RCCBs protecting the other circuits in the house that have much smaller earth leakage currents, like lighting and things like that. The use of dual RCD boards only will limit the future proofing of the property, meaning boards may need replacing sooner, but having a dual RCD board with some what we could call high integrity circuits protected by RCBOs gives us options for rearranging circuits in the future. So clearly the regs are indicating that it is best practice to have individual RCBO protection to circuits that require it, and possibly a hint at future editions categorically stating that split load boards will no longer be acceptable, but we're not there just yet. Who knows, maybe the 19th edition will finally outlaw split load boards. We'll have to just wait and see. If you've enjoyed this video, please check out this one here, or for a full breakdown of the changes amendment 2 made to circuit protection, check out our free training package by clicking the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching.